What is up and welcome back to a brand new video challenge series. This time it is something a little bit different. We are playing Korea, but we are skipping the first 20 turns on deity difficulty. To prove it, I showed that it was deity and now I'm going to show me speed running through 20 turns starting right now. So as you can see, I am skipping the first 20 turns by hitting my hands on the shift end keyboard, which automatically ends your turn no matter what happens. We do have an encampment to the northwest, but our city-state, Muscat, is dealing with it. And at turn 21, we finally start the game and decide to take out a Barbarian for good measure. First things first, we are going to go for a Warrior because we do need just a little bit of defense. Because again, this is Deity and the AI already has a 20 head start against us. 20 turn head start. We're going to go for Writing, to Animal Husbandry, to Mining, and then probably Archery. We're obviously going Writing first so we can catch up in Science as Korea. And then we're going to go Early Empire into Political Philosophy because we have to spam out cities to keep up with the AI. There is the Ark of the Covenant that is absolutely incredible. Our faith is going to skyrocket. And as as you can see, the scout decided not to subscribe to my channel, so he got gangbanged by a bunch of enemy barbarians. Yeah, it's not looking too good for him. Uh, yeah, this is a, it, it, subscribe to my channel, and it will not happen to you. I guarantee it. We are going to go fertility rights because we do not have time to go for a builder in my capital. We just gotta spam cities out quickly. There is Scythia, but they are a little too far away from us to declare war on us, so we should be fine. And Hammurabi is literally right beside us, and oh my god, I might need an early rush against him. There's our first city of Jinju in an incredible city spot, and we are going to put out our first campus, despite the fact that it is not at an optimal location, and I decide to buy that tile for some reason. I really have no idea why, looking back at it. There it is, we are in the classical era and we are in a normal age, which is key because if we were in a dark age, we would not be able to settle cities as the loyalty wouldn't be high enough. There is Matthias Corvinus, aka the dude from Shrek, and we are able to trade Ark of the Covenant to him for 300 gold and about 22 gold per turn, which is a, it's a steal, especially considering we don't really need Ark of the Covenant anymore. And over here, Hammurabi looks like, oh, hey, there's Canada. But I don't care about you for now. Hammurabi looks like he's going to settle within my vicinity. It's not a good idea, so I am going to try to intercept him. At the very least, give time for my settler to settle that city. But as you can see, he is going to get there before me. But at the very least, he is going to deal with loyalty issues, so that city will eventually come to me in no time. We're going to get Early Empire, finally, and we're going to plug in the colonization policy so we can get even more settlers even faster. And we get our first governor. We are obviously going to go for Pingala because he already gives a good boost towards science and culture. And with my ability as Korea, I get that same boost multiplied. We're going to settle right on top of that iron and end up going iron working as we get a really nice spot for a campus with our capital. And we are going to probably go to war with Hammurabi, although I don't know how well that is going to go because, uh, let's face it, he is Hammurabi and he already had a 20 turn head start against me. So again, I am just trying to put out as many campuses and cities as possible so I can catch up in both science and production. There is Yangnan. I think that's how you say it. And yeah, I think I'm going to go for a granary first because it does not have a river. Right after irrigation, we're going to go ironworking into battering rams to attack Hammurabi. At least that was my plan at this point. And I get state workforce around the same time I get ironworking, which is nice. And we're going to go take out that encampment to the north with that warrior. And over here, let's go for currency to get a little more money. And let's get the science boost for Pingala so we can get a massive boost in science. It does look like Babylon's going to lose that city fairly quickly. Uh, at this point, I still wanted to declare war on them. But at the end of the day, really, it didn't end up happening. Because they were just so far ahead of me, they had crossbows. And look at that, they're allied with Nan Mandol, who's to my south. And the crossbows and walls and that's it. I was not going to be able to take that city even with a battering ram. But I am going to be able to take that encampment. And just so you know, I disabled all different game modes that came out with the new Frontier Pass. I felt like they would just be more of a hindrance towards me because the AI would obviously get a head start on everything. So I decided to leave them out as I meet Japan and I'm able to get Classical Republic. Don't need autocracy or oligarchy to be quite honest with you. And the potential to have three economic policy slots should help me catch up both empirely and scientifically. Is empirely a word? Probably not. It's fine. I do decide to go to these policies, which is nice production boost and a nice production boost to builders and influence to get city-state envoys. And over here we get a settler, but this horseman is, ah, he's, it's a little dangerous. 
Settled is not going to be able to move for a while as we are going to get that free rebelled city that Hammurabi settled in front of us. And there is the golden age medieval era that we were looking for. I do decide to go the uh, thing that gives you science and production instead of the uh, thing that allows you to buy civilian units with faith because we're not making any faith right now. As we get this city which could potentially be a nice Petra city as we decide to go beeline it. We decided to make friends with quite literally everybody because we can and I don't want to have to build military units and they're pretty much a safeguard so they don't end up attacking me and if somebody does end up attacking me, I can just sick them on the enemy. We do settle Gyangu, I think that's how you say it, but uh, yeah, loyalty wise it's not looking good in that city. I decide to build a granary and end up buying the monument later on, although I might have to put Pingala in that city to stop it from rebelling. We do end up getting recorded history, which will give me a massive boost to my campus adjacency district bonuses. And just like that, we are making a pretty decent amount of science, about 71 per turn. And I do have education, so the universities are going to get pumped out as we go industrialization into chemistry to get more production in science, which is needed for a science victory, which is what I'm going for. This city has no production for its life. That was probably my mistake, but the Petra is going to take 50 turns to get here, which is insane. Culturally, I am just going to go for pretty much communism because that is the best scientific uh, tier 3 government. And over here, I decide to go for a aqueduct into industrial zone bonus because whoo, we're going to get some really good industrial zones. We settle our final city of Seoul, which is a lot like Pyongyang because it has absolutely no food whatsoever. And we get the great scientist who we do end up sending towards the northeast beside Singapore to get about 1,250 science. We make a nice trade deal with Canada for amenities, and we get the grants with Pingala, which will allow me to get great people faster. I put a Momni into that city-state, and I get massive amounts of Niter, which will give me a lot of production in this city, which is absolutely incredible, to be quite honest with you. We're going to get that, and we are going to enter the Renaissance with two technologies solely from the great scientist, which is nice. And that is a really nice plus four industrial zone. And this is actually pretty cheap, considering what I'm giving up for Ark of the Covenant, which I will be able to trade later for a lot more gold, which is nice. And yeah, we end up getting a lot of gold, so pretty much Trump art of the deal, that one. We enter the Renaissance era, but we are in a dark age, so we do have to be quite careful. Uh, Gyeonggyo, we are going to have to put somebody in Gyeonggyo. Uh, yeah, even if we buy the monument, really does not help the loyalty issue at all. I do end up putting Pangala in Gyeonggyo because there is absolutely... No way we're going to get a governor in 15 turns. We do make friends with quite literally everybody in the entire world, which is nice. I guess we don't have to worry about military at all for the rest of the game. As we do get civil service, and you know what that means, it is time for some alliances. And we get a really nice great scientist who gives me amenity bonuses towards everything except food, which is nice. And I get a research alliance with Hammurabi and an economic alliance with Hungary. Hammurabi, don't really have to worry about his science per turn because he does get a debuff on that. Uh, over here, we are going to get a chopping thingy, and we are going to get a workshop which will help our production tremendously. Look at all the science we're getting from this trade route. That is trade route yield porn right there, and that is absolutely nothing to get 10 gold per turn in grapes. Thank you, Japan, who I did make friends with, by the way. And as you can see from my spazzing of the mouse, I do get a plus 7 industrial zone which is pretty damn nice. Can't even lie about that. Let's get a market going to get some money going. And over here, we are going to go chop that quarry and then get a nice, quick, uh, what's it called? The C1 in Seoul, which is pretty nice. And Envoy Time, we do get Suzerainty of Ayuthia. And I was going to settle more cities down to the southwest, but then I realized Canada already has that covered. Religious-wise, nobody is taking an advantage, which is nice. I don't want to surprise religious victory as we get some pearls. And we are able to get a governor to put into Yanggu and put Pingala back into my capital to give me even more science. Science-wise, we are second in the entire world, although we do have a lot of text to catch up on. I am going to go for Merchant Republic right after Classical Republic, which will give me a lot more money, which is probably the most helpful Tier 2 government for a science victory for the most part. And look at that yield porn for that trade route. That is incredible. Catastrophic Eruption, that, that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna suck, to be quite honest. We do get an alliance with Japan. I didn't show it the first time, but I did show it the second time. We are going to now go for a workshop, and that's a pretty decent great scientist. Charles Darwin, no natural wonder, so we are going to send this guy on a journey across the land, searching for a natural wonder. 
And we hit next turn and we do get exploration soon, which is the next big policy we need. There's the modern era or industrial era. I forgot what it was called. And we do get some production for this city because we do not end up getting the Petra. There is exploration. There is Merchant Republic. And now we can get more policies and a very nice Merchant Republic 10% uh, gold for cities and governors. And the other thing is 10% production towards districts, which is, which is both really nice and going to help us tremendously. These are all the policies I picked. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. We're going to confirm our choices and I really can't move across Scythia. So I do have to get open borders with Scythia. Just thought being friends gave you open borders, but I guess I was wrong, but yeah, let's keep moving them. And what is Charles Darwin doing, dog? You're not escaping me. Go find some natural wonders. God damn it. We are going to be in a normal age next time around, which could be nice as we do get connoisseur for Pringala to help our culture gains a little bit. And over here, we do enter an industrial era, normal age. Is I was hoping for a golden age, but meh. We do get guilds, which gives me a nice double production bonus towards industrial zones. And over here, we do have to work, focus on food so we don't starve. And in the normal age, I do decide to go reform the coinage, I think. Heartbeat of Steam? Heartbeat of Steam. Yeah, we go Heartbeat of Steam. Uh, it was the wrong choice because we do end up getting a Dark Age the next time around, which I think is our second Dark Age, maybe third at this point. We do decide to go for an industrial zone here. Although, yeah, we're going to have to put it somewhere there because of the aqueduct in my capital. And we get space industries with Pingala, which will allow me to get a massive boost on space port building production thingies. And with, oh my god, give me those grapes. Uh, he doesn't want to. Okay, I'm going to have to say no to that. We do get the Dead Sea, though, which does mean Charles Darwin can finally rest in peace after all these years of searching. Good job, Charles. And we do get chemistry, which means research labs are coming in hot. And as for the rest of my tech tree for the rest of the game, I am in the lead, although I do have to protect my lead as someone like Hungary or Hammurabi can easily catch up. I'm going to go standard spaceports into the moon landing and to nanotechnology. And the question marks, I have absolutely no idea where the exoplanet expedition is. So that's going to be fun. We do get this, uh, what's it called? The Enlightenment. And because most of my campuses are already plus four adjacency bonus, I can get rationalism and get a massive boost in science per turn. We do get industrialization. The factories and Ruhr Valley will help me out tremendously. And I buy a factory here and I decide to go for Reyna. We're going to get some more money out of her policies. And over here we get flight and we are going to get the great merchant that gives us toys, which is extremely nice. And more amenities is more wins. And over here, we do go for the Roar Valley. And we do have a great engineer who can help us push it out fairly quickly. 19 turns for Roar Valley. That's fine. Over here, we are going to go for a spy. Although I do mess up because I forget that you cannot put spies into your ally cities. And I'm pretty much allied with the entire world at this point, as you can see throughout this entire speedrun. Allied with everybody except Scythia. And so, ooh, look at these trade routes, man. Look at these trade routes. It's absolutely beautiful. I love these trade routes so much. But yeah, when look at the spy that's about to come out. I can't put him anywhere because I'm allied with these guys, and I forgot about the rule that you can't put your spies in allied cities. So I do have to settle to put him in Scythia, who is last in science. Tech-wise, we're only eight techs behind Hungary, which really is not that bad at all, especially considering we are ahead of these guys at the tech tree. Industrial era, there's rocketry, and I do end up putting up spaceports. I don't really know what to do with the spy. I do just want to level him up so I can have a leveled up spy defending me. There is the modern era and another dark age, which absolutely sucks balls right now. We do get a great engineer who, I mean, he gives a free factory, I guess, and workshop to Seoul, which is nice. They still have absolutely no food, so I'm still going to keep calling it Pyongyang. We do get up a spaceport over here. And envoy-wise, we are... I didn't show that. Okay. But I do end up getting two diplomatic victory points here as I realize that being allied with everybody gives you a lot of diplomatic favor. So I guess it's good. We can potentially... Oh, well, no. Nope. Canada somehow has more diplomatic victory points than me or influence points. So I'm not going to be able to get the diplomatic victory points this time around. We do almost have satellites, which is nice. And we do get the Ruhr Valley, which is extremely nice production-wise. And as you can see, we do have spaceports damn near everywhere, as we get a great scientist to give us a boost to refining and computers.
Uh, this is weird. Canada wanted to give me Jade, which was their last Jade, so I thought that was weird, and when I added something else to the deal, they said we don't want to give up Jade anymore. I guess it's kind of a bug. But as you can see over here, really, it's a three-way tie between me, Hammurabi, and Matthias Corvinus on the tech tree, as we get crossbows finally in the Atomic Era, which is kind of weird. And as you can see, we have spaceports everywhere, except for the city towards the north, the failed Petra City, which could have been really good, but ends up being... And meh, not really that good. Over here, we decide to actually put all our points this time towards getting the diplomatic victory points. And hey, we do get end up four diplomatic victory points from this policy, so that's good. We do get plus one diplomatic visibility with every nation, which would be extremely strong as Mongolia. Just gonna put that out there, as we can finally launch the Earth satellite in our capital. Great people-wise, we do get a nice great scientist who gives me culture and science for being on a other civs. Uh, campus, I think it is. So you do get a nice boost to that. We're going to hit next turn, and we do end up getting ideology soon, as it is neck and neck in the tech game. My god, this is close. But yeah, there is the Atomic Era, and what do you know, a back-to-back -back Dark Age that could end up being crippling for us. Spoiler alert, that's foreshadowing, by the way. And we do end up getting some decent policy cards. Five-year plan will help us tremendously, as will Levy and Mass. And I do decide to go for, yeah, I wanted to go Raj. But Colonial Taxes, I felt like, was just a little bit better, as half of my cities are on another continent, technically. So we do end up going for Colonial Taxes, which is nice. And yeah, we do finally end up getting Communism. And despite the fact that it failed in real life... I'm actually going to make it work this time, as it gives me massive science and production boost to cities with governors, which is extremely nice, and everybody knows production and science is how you win a science victory. I do end up going civil prestige, so I can get some nice amenities and housing, and yeah, pretty much this is... Oh, nope, I lied. I decided to go for... No. Nope. Okay, I don't know what that was, but hey, we get communism. That's good. Over here, we get spaceports finally in our last city to the north, and we have so much oil here. This city actually is going to be a monster production city. Hungary is in the lead science-wise, but barely. We do have some massive trading routes, though, so that is really good. And we do get a source of aluminum beside our failed Petra city. And as you can see from us finding all the natural wonders, we do finally get out that first spaceship part, which is nice. We're going to hit next turn, and we do get combined arms soon, so hopefully we'll be able to get some uranium. And Hungary just has a massive amount of cities. I don't know if we're going to be able to keep up with them. And yeah, let's keep going. This is now the Atomic Era, or Modern Era, whatever era it is. And we do get nanotechnology, and we're just going to just beeline straight through the future techs as me and Matthias Corvinus are neck and neck and neck with Hammurabi of Babylon. And a heroic era in the information era might be enough to make up for the absolutely god-awful back-to-back dark ages in the last two eras. Skies and Stars is going to give us a nice boost towards the exoplanet expedition techs and Eurekas for satellites, which we already have. But I mean, meh, we do get three. We do get three, uh, what, what are these called? Policy dedications. We get three dedications, which is nice. You get a free giant death robot, so again, I guess that's kind of helpful. As we do go for the arena here, and we do have a good number of city-state allies, which it's it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Might be able to go for a diplomatic victory as we fortify our giant death robot while our army is still consisting of warriors and archers. And over here, we are able to launch the nanotechnology. I forget what that's called. It's not the Mars colony. It's the one after that. Uh, but yeah, we do finally get smart materials over there and decide to beeline it, although. We don't have the SS booster parts or whatever those things do that help you get a science victory faster. Really science, me and Matthias Corvinus, we are just so close to each other. It's absolutely insane. As I launch the Exoplanet Expedition, I do go production focus to make it go 17 turns instead of 26, which is helpful. And I guess I'll put an envoy or thing into Amani, which is nice. And we cannot find for the life of us the last technology we need. And we are just pretty much just going to go campus research grants so we can get even more science to get things even more faster. As you can see, the planet is pretty much fucked over because uh, everyone's trying to go for a science victory that we don't even care about this planet anymore. <laughs> Sounds like somebody you know? Okay, then. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, I'm sorry to say, I really am. It's game over. He's going two light years per turn, and I still have at least 15 turns until I get that last technology. So it's game over. It, we're not going to be able to win. He's going to have like 
30 or 40 light years by the time we get the technology in which we can boost our speed instead of finishing in 50 turns we would finish in uh 10 or 50 turns so yeah good game to hungary we almost won we almost pulled it out but in the end it just was not enough if i had maybe 20 more turns i probably could have pulled out the victory but, hey, we came close. We did play Korea. I might try this challenge again if this does get enough love. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Uh, it was a pretty fun challenge. It was definitely a very difficult, honestly. Deity difficulty is already hard enough. Skipping the first 20 turns, which are the most vital turns in any game, any Civ player will tell you, did end up being the nail in our coffin. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you all in the next video.